Well, let me start kind of with a little bit of an opener. You know, I just, this 23 class, this is really the one I said last year at this time that, you know, give us 365 days, you know, give us an opportunity to really get out, get a full coaching staff, meet with players, go through a whole process, summer camps. You know, there's so much that goes into our evaluation process to get to that this day. That's why when these guys come in, all 22 of them, there's a lot of celebration because, you know, there's time spent away from, from family and friends to be on phone calls, to be in living rooms, to do all those things. And it isn't just me recruiting. I get to sit up here and do the press conference, but, you know, the, the credit goes to our coaching staff. Uh, it goes to our recruiting department, you know, Rob, Rob Slager, Justin Kramer, all of our scouts and, and recruiters, Stacy Ford, uh, Taylor Lee. Um, but also our whole community. You know, it takes a community to recruit them, right? From the faculty and staff to our administrators to the hotels, restaurants. I mean, we sell Pullman and we're about as real as you can be. You know, instead of taking them to five star restaurants, we have a barbecue on the 50 yard line and we bring all of our families here and that's what we do. You know, I said it earlier today, it's family over flash and really excited about this group of men and who they are and, uh, you know, selling them the promise of, Develop them not as just football players, but as but as people, right? So, you know, real quick, just on, on all these guys, Colton, and I'll get to your question. But Jackson Potter, you know, Jackson, you know, in this world, quarterbacking is everything, you know. And I think you always have to know who's next. And Jackson has always been next for us, you know. So, you know, his his process really started in the last couple of weeks, but a big long gunslinger, right? I think he's had an amazing senior year. 27 touchdowns, two interceptions, and one of the best leagues in California is something that we've really noticed his improvement. And I think the sky's the limit for him, you know, once he gets, you know, in a strength and conditioning program, I think he's going to get nothing but better. Um, five offensive linemen, you know, get, get used to this. You know, we signed seven last year. We signed five this year. It's a target that we really want to hit each and every year. So, um, and you see him really in our footprint. You know, I think that's big. You know, and that brought back Clay McGuire for this. You know, Noah Dunham, Nathan Gates, uh, Essa Pole. Essa's a great story because of his brother Tony, you know, an iconic play in the Apple Cup. And it was cool through the recruiting process to have his brother back with him. We showed the back home video. There was a tear that came to the eye. But this is where the family plays. And, and um, obviously home state, Nathan Pritchard, Ashton Tripp, uh, if I miss Nathan Gates, I mean, look at the sizes, right? Six, seven, 300 pounds, all four of them, six, five plus. We want length and size and growth potential. And I've said this many times, we put them in the slow cooker, right? We don't put them in the microwave, right? We need these guys to take time to develop. And you're going to see last year's class now be names this spring. And these guys will be names as we go forward. But Essa, I believe, is a plug and play player. Trey Lechner out of Glacier Peak right here in Washington is that versatile H-back jackknife that we've been looking for. A guy that can never come off the field. We can stay in 11 personnel and flex him out and bring him in and be an anchor and just be one of those guys that is so versatile. And, and Trey was our first verbal commitment, you know, all the way back in April. And he's been a leader for this class each and every step of the way. And I know they have their group texts and their Instagrams and all this stuff, but Trey has been just kind of the pillar of this class. And I'm excited excited hopefully to grow Trey into a, a captain because he's one of the most uh, competitive people I've ever met. Uh, Leo Pulalasi, uh, Lakes High School, another Washington product. Yeah, I love when players on defense and on offense, man, they're pulling. I want him as a linebacker. I want him as a running back. Like, that's the type of talent that Leo is. And running back uh, with Coach Atawaya, one out. I think that's where his passion is. But, uh, you know, kind of that in-between of Nakia to Jalen can flex out, catch passes, still be a power runner, uh, excited about his growth. And then the three wide receivers. Uh, Carlos Hernandez is going to be joining us as a mid-year enrollee. Uh, Brandon Hills, who is also going to be doing track here because he's over a 23-foot long jumper already as a as a 17 year old and dt sheffield out of northwest mississippi to me is rob farrell renard bell 2.0 you know i think uh, a lot of people tell dt what he can't do we just look at the explosive athlete and what he really can do so uh, excited about two of those three guys uh, that'll be on campus here early in january It'll also be a position that we'll continue to look for uh, as we go throughout this next process. And then, then the defense. You know, we need to reload our defensive front. Uh, Ansel Dinbu, uh, out of uh, Alito, a state champion. And when you say that in Texas, that's like six rounds deep, right? So there's a lot of really positive.
positive things that Ansel has done. Uh, he will also be joining us in the mid-year, so he'll be on campus in three weeks. Khalil Laufau uh, out of Utah, another big physical dominant presence. You know, So those big bodies and those interior defensive linemen, when you start this defense, it has to start there. Okay, uh, linebacker-wise, Tristan Bohannon. Tristan, we ended up having C at a Texas football camp, and he's a guy that we've tracked along the way. Uh, he's, you know, if not 6'4", 6'3", long, lean, can run around, great speed, very versatile. Uh, Ty uh, Fa'avai, um, just physical. You know, I, there's one point in the season where I had to tell Ty, like, hey, you can't, you can't knock everybody out of the game, you know, but he is a one of those guys that loves football, works his tail off, uh, an elite processor of just kind of defense, and I think he really fits us well. And, you know, a, a portal transfer and Devin Richardson, who we actually recruited the first time when he was a freshman All-American out of New Mexico State and obviously went to Texas. He's from Texas. And, you know, now that he's back as a grad transfer, is another opportunity to add to our program. And I think it's a position of need going forward. Uh, and Devin, uh, I think, is a high-character individual that can come in and provide some leadership at that position. And then there's no secret to take six DBs. It was one of those things where we want to continue to get more athletic and really reload and restock uh, that position. So uh, Jamori Colson, uh, who is out of Iowa Western, is, is an All-American uh, corner, but is also a national champion. Iowa Western won the national championship at the junior college level this year. Uh, Kiwan Davis uh, out of Chicago. Uh, Kiwan is one of those guys who reminds us of Sauce Gardner, right? He's always 6'2 plus. He's long, can run. Uh, he's rangy. I have a great connection uh, with Coach Q uh, because I recruited Kenwood Academy uh, throughout my career at Wyoming. Uh, that's how Kiwan ended up here. Uh, Kapena Gushikin uh, out of Saddleback by way um, you know, of Hawaii. I think he gives us an opportunity to, to replace Armani Marsh. You know, I think he's a versatile guy uh, that can come in and play in the in interior cover uh, corner. Uh, Stephen Hall, another guy out of Northwest. Uh, he was DT's teammate, you know, a long rangey kid that can really, really run. Um, had an injury that kind of held him back last year, and I think he really progressed uh, this season. You know, Warren Smith, he'll be another early enrollee. Uh, El Cerrito's been great to us, you know, so D. Lang and Armani Archie recently, uh, but they have great football there, and he's another in a long line of, of deep, long corners. And last but not least, uh, Adrian Wilson, we call him Boogie. Uh, so we're just excited you know, for what he can do and, you know, just turn the film on. He's so athletic. He's so versatile. He'll be that free safety in our scheme that can come do a lot of different things. So our philosophy at defensive back is always recruit a lot of big, long corners. And then, you know, George Hicks ended up at free safety. Monty Marsh ended up at, at the nickel cover guys. So we're, we're about taking a lot of speed and length and playmaking. So that's a little bit of covering of these guys. And I'll, I'll kind of open it up now, Colton, to just some questions. In terms of the, the JUCO recruits, does it seem like each of those guys could be like, you know, kind of immediate plug and play? Yeah, I mean, that's always the goal. Uh, you know, for us, it'll always be high school developmental players, and it'll be, you know, mostly junior college players that we feel can come in. And we've been really successful here at Washington State with, you know, those type of guys. So I think they're hungry. I think they really value this place uh, when they get here. I think they see it as an opportunity. Um, so all those guys that we bring in at junior college, you know, are expected to hopefully come in and contribute. So we've, we've done an amazing job. Like I said, our coaches, Coach Brown, Coach Malone on these defensive backs have done an amazing job creating relationships and then finding fits. You know, so like Jamori, uh, Coach Brown recruited him when he was at Troy coming out of high school. Right. So it's interesting connections as you kind of go through some of these guys. And, and he's definitely one of them. Do you have a kind of a rough estimate of how many more guys you want to add before spring and, and kind of what the other positional needs you're looking at going forward? You know, we do have some spots, um, you know, because you can only plan for so, so much. And, and we plan for a roster turnover. I think there was guys that needed other opportunities to go play other places. So uh, O-line will still be looking for an impact offensive lineman, uh, a couple impact wide receivers, um, some bigger bodies at defensive tackle, and then obviously some linebackers that can come in and really compete. So I think last year when you look at the body of it in the second signing day, 
we found Jalen Jenkins, right? We found John Mateer, the Roten twins, Kendall Williams, you know, Tony Carter, like guys that we feel really good about. And when the dust settles, there will still be a lot of really good players, both in the portal and high school guys that we feel can fit our system and where we want to go. So, um, you know, this class is standing on the foundation that this team just built, and, and we're excited about building upon that. I was just going to ask the follow-up to that because you've been talking all season long about building this program up. Yeah. Um, how are these new recruits going to be able to help you do that? Because I think the most important things in life are things that you can't see. You know, we, we put them through tests. We see them at camp, height, weight, bend, mobility, change of direction. But character, values, family, heart, passion, loving football, um, team captains, multi-sport guys. I mean, these are things and traits that we really look for, right? There's a lot of talent in this world. What is the fit? You know, and I, I tell recruits all the time, people are chasing a lot of things, right? They're not finding what's really best fit for them, right? And I think that's what college football has created. Um, but that's also why there's a lot of people in the portal because in the first time through, they're not really keeping focus on what's important to them, right? And you know, I've said this before, but standing next to Lamborghinis has nothing to do with young men's future. It doesn't, right? It gets lost in a lot of different things, and that's cool, right? And it's, it gets a lot of clicks on Instagram, but does that really help you be successful uh, as a player, as a person, uh, as a developmental, you know, male in society? Like, there's a lot of things that go with all this. So football is our vehicle to develop men you know, that are ready for a changing, diverse and challenging world. Right. So that's a, a long answer to what we're trying to do. But th there's a lot to this and, and just excited about this this group of players and the trust that their family really shows us um, sending their young men uh, to us. And you talk about obviously um, developing these young men are, is so important. And you, you talked about two all season, the, the gritty and the tough way yeah. that these Wazoo players play. I'm curious, is there a commonality that you saw in all of these recruits or are they all kind of unique in their own way on what they can bring to, uh, to Washington State? Well, I think they're all unique, uh, but the common thread to your point is, you know, two things. Like we recruit them on two things. You got to want to be here, right? So we don't, it's not a car salesman. It's not a try to trick them. You know, you got to love the Palouse. You got to love the small town, the big community, the Coug fanfare, every piece of it. And you got to understand the value, right? That it, that it can pos possibly bring you. And the second part, I alluded to it, but the trust that is built over time with families, right? That's really important, right? So these families, right, are really proud of them from zero to 18, right? And what they're handing over. So the trust that it takes for us to take them from 18 to 23, it, it's a big deal. And, you know, when I talked to families this morning, they're like, coach, take care of my boy, right? And I, I said, I promised it and we'll do that. So that's what excites me about this group. I, I think we're getting a great group of young men. All right. Thank you, coach. And then coach, uh, so one of the names, Devin Richardson, yesterday, I think when a lot of fans saw that, you know, name pop up and then see the name Texas, you know, a sure. lot, you know, comes with that and they just, sure. they get excited. Um, and they probably also, you know, put some similarities with Dayon from last year. Yeah. Um, do you think that he could, I mean, Dayon's one of a I kind, but. Put that, I don't want to put that on anybody. Uh, I don't want to put that on anybody. I, I'm definitely excited about Devin. Um, you know, I think there's there's comps out there. I think he's got, you know, length and range and size. And I think he's got a lot of smart and character attributes that can come in. And I think there's only – you can't replicate experience. You know, and I think he's got experience at doing a bunch of different things with different schematics. You know, so I'm interested to see him come and plug in our mic position and, and see how well he adapts to that and learns and, and takes control. So, But I'm not going to put Dayan on anybody. Dayan's his own animal, and, and I want Devin to be his own person too. Fair enough there. And then so you were talking a little bit a couple of weeks ago about sort of the challenges of – you know, with the bowl game and you know recruiting yeah. and all that going on I guess just overall how do you think you and your team have been able to handle this well then you look back and I, an over resounding positive right it's, there's been challenges right we haven't been able to lock our knees ever and just kind of settle in but we knew that was going to be part of this process right so from 
preparing the team for the bowl game to doing you know home visits at night when we were down in the LA uh, to getting to this point to securing this class to not having any surprises is a really positive thing you know especially when you have staff staff changes right so uh, I'm proud of the relationships that were built and the hard work that's been put into it so there is work to do, but we're not going to focus on that now. I, I told the staff, let's, let's be really excited today when we go to sleep about this group that we have. Don't worry about the ones you didn't get. Don't worry about the ones we still need to bring in. Let's be super excited about this group of men. You getting out of bed tomorrow? <laughs> yes, because I have a lot of Zooms and interviews that i got to handle tomorrow. So when I said that about the couch, that got canceled. Uh, you can rewrite that story. So we'll be, we'll be up ready to go. Jake, can you, I mean, you've been recruiting Division One for a long time at Wyoming here and now as the head coach. How has the transfer portal changed how you and your staff now recruit high school players? The transfer portal has changed the urgency for some of the high school kids. You know, I think there's a lot of offers out there that sometimes disappear because all of a sudden people take portal kids late. Uh, the NIL has changed the game. Right, not the portal for Washington State, in my opinion. You know, the the portal is what it is. We'll never be a portal place and, and be a, a dream destination and all those things. So we'll always do it, you know, kind of through our process of developing and that's good. But, you know, the NIL has changed and that that's gonna be something that we have to really navigate our place within that. You know, because some of the numbers you hear are are staggering. You know, so I'm proud of these guys and want to come here for the right reasons, um, but we'll navigate that as it continues to change. Um, this is your first full yeah. class, so I mean, sometimes there's needs you have to fill. Was this just a wide-ranging net? You just needed a little bit of everything? Yeah, I, I knew coming in we'd probably have two years of roster turnover, right? Happened some last year, happened this year, and, and much needed, you know, so we can put our stamp on the program and, and build a foundation for a future because COVID kind of backlogged everybody, you know, so uh, allow us to go get a whole class. Uh, but, you know, uh, Rob Schlager, our director of player personnel, does a great job of saying these are our needs, these are where we need to go, these are maybe some expected changes that might happen, and we have to recruit to those things. You know, so the portal has changed how you project your numbers. It used to be here's your seniors, you got 13 scholarships, let's replace, let's replace these positions and go. Now, I mean, you get curveballs thrown at you, right? You plan on taking – you know, two linebackers, and then now you need to take three more starting December, right? So there's some different challenges that has been created that way, and you just got to keep attacking, and it's all about finding fit and, and not panicking and making sure when you take somebody, it's someone you really want and you see a vision of who they can be within your program. You talked about, and take out the junior college guys because you expect them, you already said yeah. that, but you talked about the slow cooker, yeah. not the microwave. So are any of these freshmen – to use your term, on the microwave path, or are they all on the slow cooker path? <laughs> no, they're, we... not all, they're not on the slow cooker path. But, uh, you know, guys that I think can impact early, you know, the two that really come to mind because they'll be here in the spring, and I think it's a big advantage, is Carlos Hernandez, okay, at wide receiver. Then I think Warren Smith is a extremely high-level recruit and corner and cover guy. You know, he was very coveted really up until the last second. Uh, Essa Pole, you know, we've recruited Essa to be a plug-and-play offensive lineman at that size. He actually just started playing as a senior in high school. It's incredible. Uh, and his development at Chabot reminds me a little, a little bit of Falili, who was a defensive tackle just like his brother up until a year ago, right? So every time we turn on the film week to week, Essa was getting, you know, better and better. And, you know, obviously DT we feel great about. Uh, Ansel, uh, Dimbu, he'll be another guy that's here early that there's going to be an opportunity at that size and length to play early in his career. And, um, you know, we'll see what happens with the linebackers. So th there'll be a bunch of pieces that we'll take a look at early and, and see who can handle that, that load and really use this class, you know, to utilize those four games as a red shirt. This is for our station in the Tri-Cities. You signed a kid out of Kennewick High School, Ashton yeah. Tripp. Can you talk about what you liked about him and where you see him here? Ashton, when we recruited him, was 16 years old, and he was 6'7", 295 pounds. That's what I love. Right. He's just a baby giraffe right now. OK. And I'm so excited about him. And if he was here, I'd tell him that. But there's a fit like the Tri-Cities embodies Cougs. 
right? And we want to go down there, you know, and try to pluck the best one every year in our region. And Ashton was without a doubt that guy. Um, but he's the guy maybe that, that uh, rivals and rankings don't tell you about, right? But those are the guys that fit here. And Ashton embodies who we are. His family can drive an hour and a half and see him play every game. And they just are so thankful that their boy gets to play for Washington State. You know, and those are the guys that are going to give you everything they have each and every day, right? So um, hopefully it's just the beginning of finding local homegrown talent right here in our backyard. Last question. Uh, can you give us an update on your two coordinator searches? Absolutely. I got a lot of interviews still to do, right? So the best thing I can guarantee everybody is that stylistically, you know, we brought this style of defense here in 2020, and I think everyone sees the positive results. Uh, we need to keep growing and keep advancing, but I think we're a top three defense in our league again this year. Uh, so very proud of that. So stylistically, we'll stay the same. You know, and then on offense, you know, I think whatever happened, it was going to be a year where we needed to grow and get better. Okay, so there can be a lot of positives to this. Uh, I think there can be a lot of positives for Cam uh, to have someone new from the outside to see his talent, how we can shape it. And, um, you know, he'll be part of that process. It'll be focused on his skill set, where we can develop him, but also fitting a coordinator within our pieces of coaches. Um, because I, I want our staff to be here, right? So that'll be part of the journey that we're going to be on in the next couple of weeks, and I'm excited to find people, first and foremost, that can create stability. I understand the importance of that and want to be here and, and value Washington State and our, our place and players. So that's, that's going to be at the forefront of what we do going forward, and I'm excited about the men and the mentors that are going to be coming here to Pullman, Washington.